assistant professor um, at Department of Physiology, Khyber Girls Medical College. And uh, the study that we conducted in, uh, as part of my PhD research was the effect of short duration, moderate intensity physical activity on glycemic control and antioxidant status of pre-diabetic population. So uh, I would like to give you an overview of what we did in the study, but this is a component of that. As you all know, physical inactivity, use of internet, social media, intake of uh, junk food, um, fast food and processed food, they all lead to obesity. And uh, because of uh, consumption and in uh, lack of physical activity, there's hyperglycemia and dyslipidemias, which can lead to a condition which is called pre-diabetes. This is a condition which is between diabetes and normal state. And normally we have antioxidants in our body, which are neutralized by the free radicals, which are produced whenever there is hyperglycemia. So in pre-diabetes, there is high blood sugar compared to normal. So the antioxidants in our body are compromised. And we are going to look at the effect of moderate intensity physical activity on anthropometric measurements, on the cardiometabolic markers, and also on the antioxidants. So this was an experimental study design. Uh, as you know, prediabetes, it's a preclinical condition with fasting blood glucose between 100 to less than 126 milligram per deciliter and glycated hemoglobin between 5.7 to less than 6.5% according to American Diabetes Association. Pre-diabetes in America, we have 86 million American adults and more than one out of three have got pre-diabetes. And the dilemma is that nine out of 10 do not know that they are pre-diabetic. So Pakistani population, if we talk about the prevalence here, we are among the top 10 countries for the increase in prevalence in diabetes. Actually, we are at the seventh position and the prevalence of diabetes has reached to 17.1% according to the International Diabetes Federation on 14th November, 2019. Uh, risk factors for uh, so prevalence in Pakistan according to a study done by Amir et al, it is 17% while that of pre-diabetes is 11%. Now, the risk factors for diabetes and pre-diabetes are family history, obesity, increase in weight, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, and consumption of uh, junk food, processed food, fast food. They can all lead to increased weight gain and hyperglycemia leading to pre-diabetes. So, uh, we talk about oxidative stress. Whenever we have hyperglycemia, there's more production of free radicals in our body. And these free radicals, normally they are neutralized by the endogenous antioxidants that are present in our body. These antioxidants uh, are neutral, uh, neutralizing these free radicals. But when there's excess of free radicals, the level of antioxidant decreases and there's an imbalance created in the body. And this excess of free radicals can lead to damage. And this can include beta cell dysfunction, cardiomyopathy, cardiovascular disease, retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, etc. We are all familiar with the complications of diabetes. Now coming to the antioxidants that are elements that can either slow down the uh, oxidation of substrate or stop the oxidation of substrate to form free radicals. We group them into two categories, enzymatic and non-enzymatic. The enzymatic category, superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase, they form the first line of defense uh, against the free radicals that are produced in our body, whereas the non-enzymatic We've included the second line of defense formed by vitamin C and uric acid, and nitric oxide is also grouped uh, into non-enzymatic antioxidant. It also has a role in the uh, neutralization of the free radicals and prevention of platelet aggregation. So the rationale of this study was as little is known about the effect of planned exercise protocol on antioxidant status 
all the available literature that was looked into focuses on acute exercise protocol and individual antioxidants. And so far, little research has been done on determining the individual and total antioxidant status in pre-diabetics. And there's a little research done in Pakistan as well. So our research question was, what is the effect of planned exercise protocol on antioxidant status and cardiometabolic markers in pre-diabetic population? Objectives were to determine the total antioxidant status and the individual antioxidants in pre-diabetic population and to determine the effects of planned exercise on individual and total uh, antioxidant status in the set population. Methodology was that um, this research proposal was submitted to the Graduate Study Committee and after approval to the Advanced Studies Research Board. And once we got the ethical approval, we went ahead with this. Calculated the sample size using G uh, power calculator and it came out to be 50. It was an experimental study design carried out uh, at the Institute of Basic Medical Sciences the sampling technique was purposes sampling. It was carried out at Metabolic Suite at Institute of Basic Medical Sciences, Khyber Medical University, Peshawar, Pakistan. And the duration of the study was 24 months. Inclusion criteria included all the pre-diabetics between 18 to 35 year age group and excluded all those who had any chronic condition, smokers, pregnant females, pregnant females, those on antioxidant supplements, and those on regular exercise or doing yoga. 141 volunteers were screened, and out of these, we included 57 in the study, whereas we excluded 84. Out of them, five were diabetic and the other rest were normal. The completers were 50 and the dropouts were seven due to various reasons. So, we, uh, our first baseline session was divided into five visits. Visit one day one was um, basically the eligibility criteria, we inf uh, informed consent, questionnaire, demographics, anthropometric measurements, and body composition was determined using uh, MI scale. On day three, after 48 hours of fast, uh, after 48 hours, uh, and we asked them to avoid high antioxidant diet, and they came in after 12 hours of fasting. We took the fasting blood sample, provided them with a light breakfast, and after some time, uh, they did a moderate exercise uh, session to um, sensitize them with the treadmill. On day three, uh, on day four, visit three, which was first experimental run through of moderate exercise. And we used the uh, pedometers to count the steps, uh, conducted a number of steps that they took in that half an hour. On visit four, day five, 30 minutes moderate exercise. Again, the step count per session was counted with the help of a pedometer to standardize the step count. And visit five, day six, again, 30 minutes moderate exercise and step counts were counted using pedometers to standardize the number of uh, steps. The participants, they followed the same exercise protocol for eight weeks. They were uh, given these pedometers. All the participants were provided with their own pedometers and these pedometers, uh, the MI software was uh, installed on their phones and those who could not who did not have soft, um, these smartphones, they were given uh, log bo books to record their step count. The, after uh, eight weeks, they were again asked to abstain from the advised foods that is high antioxidant diet for 48 hours before the final visit in fasting state after 12 hours of fasting on day 65. Moderate exercise was uh, conducted using the American Sports uh, Association guidelines, eight weeks of moderate exercise with heart rate maximum of 64 to less than 75, uh, 76%. Predicted heart rate maximum was calculated using 220 minus age formula. The statistical analysis was, uh, 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 SPS was conducted through SPSS version 20. Shapiro-Wilk test for normality was used 
and pair T test was paired sample T test was used to compare the pre and post exercise samples. The results baseline we uh, used 24 hour dietary recall to check the diet of the subjects. We did not use any dietary intervention, but their baseline dietary habits show high carbohydrate intake followed by fat and the least was protein in their diets. The anthropometric measurements weight, waist circumference, hip circumference, waist hip ratio, BMI, and body fat percentage, they showed a significant reduction at post-intervention uh, sh shown by the p-value. The fasting blood glucose and glycated hemoglobin also showed a significant reduction showed by these two stars uh, at post-intervention analysis. And pre, uh, the insulin levels and the insulin resistance measured by HOMA IR for formula, they also showed a significant reduction at post-intervention. Lipid profile, the triglycerides, the LDL and cholesterol showed a significant reduction at post-intervention, whereas high-density lipoprotein showed improvement at post-intervention analysis. Antioxidant levels, the superoxide dismutase, and glutathione peroxidase, nitric oxide, and vitamin C all showed a decrease at post-intervention analysis, which was uh, against our expectation, whereas uric acid and total antioxidant capacity showed an increase at post-intervention analysis. Overall results, anthropometric measurements, body composition, diabetic profile, lipid profile showed a marked improvement at post-intervention analysis. Exercise combated pre-diabetes, which is evident by the fact that 48% uh, of the participants, they had their HbA1c in normal range, though all of them showed a significant reduction in their HbA1c level at post-intervention. But 48% had their glycated hemoglobin in normal range. Total antioxidant capacity and uric acid levels showed an increase at post-intervention analysis. Moreover, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, peroxidase, nitric oxide, and vitamin C showed a decrease at post-intervention analysis. Uric acid and TAC, that is total antioxidant capacity, increased at post-intervention. So we conclude that exercise significantly helped in reducing the fasting blood glucose and HbA1c level. Anthropometrics, body composition, diabetic profile, total antioxidant status, and uric acid showed significant improvement at post-intervention analysis. Exercise may be used as an alternative to therapeutics in combating prediabetes. So limitation of our study was that eight weeks of exercise was not enough to improve the individual antioxidants. No dietary intervention was done in this study. And we can recommend that screening of the population should be done for prediabetes. It is very common. A balanced diet rich in antioxidants can be given to the subjects. Programmed exercise can be devised for durations longer than eight weeks, and future studies should focus on moderate exercise of different durations um, to help in exercise-induced adaptations. Future directions, pre-diabetic population in addition may require dietary interventions to improve their antioxidant status because more free radicals are there and they compromise their antioxidant status. 16 to 20 weeks of exercise can be used um, and another study can be conducted with rather than eight weeks, we can use a greater period to uh, look at the effect of exercise on these markers. These are my references. Thank you so much. Any questions?